Well, welcome everyone. My name is Joni Parsons. I'm co-creator of Revel 11, and we created Revel 11 about five years ago to highlight amazing women. And today we have the extreme pleasure of um, talking with Cynthia Zamaria, who is from Toronto, as she mentioned. We're so happy to have you here today, Cynthia. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. And isn't her backdrop just <laughs> fabulous? I was like, oh my God, that just like um, inspired me right off the top when I saw that about 15 minutes ago. Um, and I just want to say that I am recovering from COVID. So I have a little frog in my throat. I just want you to know that I apologize if I um, cough every once in a while, but I'll try not to. Um, but anyway, I wanted to start this morning off by reading a quick introduction from Cynthia's beautiful new book called House and Flower, Reviving Forgotten Homes and Gardens. It's just absolutely stunning from my friends and publishers, Robin and Deborah Prinzing from Bloom Imprint. It's a brand new publishing company focusing on home and garden. But going back to Cynthia's book, I just think that this is lovely and really resonated with me as a place where we're at right now. And as you can see, it says, welcome in. There's been a surge in nesting, nest making, home bodies by choice or because we have no choice at all. We have a rising appreciation for a refuge of our personal spaces and what they offer. We are a society of improvers attempting to tease every last bit of opportunity from our sanctuaries indoors and out. I know I've certainly been there the last couple of years. Home is home base. Our living spaces have become our workspaces, teaching spaces, exercise spaces, as well as our contemplative and vacation spaces. Outside calls us in. Mother nature is the healer. We grow, we feel the earth, we feel better, and flowers always make it better. This is our circumstances. This is where we meet, and might I add, entertain. Cynthia, I just love that. That just meant so much to me when I read that introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it, it really is, you know, I, I, as I was saying, just as we were getting started, I was curious which part of the book you were going to um, read. And you, you know, you, you, you took right from the very beginning. And I think that's that's really interesting because it, it certainly is about welcoming in and setting the stage and trying to communicate the contextual environment that this book was written in and the times we're living in, um, but also moving forward and um, you know taking some of the learnings that we've had over the last number of years and plus the learnings that I've had and Graham and I have had you know in our homes um, over the last 25 years so um, it's a journey right our homes are our journey our gardens are a journey and um, you know we certainly are all have been facing an interesting time in the last little while but it's yes. all about um, being together so um, and creating a home and and a garden and and I love how we talk about the garden as a palette, but it's also our home that's a palette. And I'd love for you to talk a little bit about your design philosophy, both inside and out. Sure. Um, so, um, Natalia, maybe are we going to share the screen at this point? There's a slide that, do we want to go there yet or not? Oh, um, I was hoping you would talk a little bit about, yeah, about, about these. Yeah. Uh, so the philosophy is is really about the. Um, so let me step back. So um, I do you know design of homes. We've renovated seven homes together, my husband and I. Um, and I started out being what I would call a recreational decorator. I you know we started doing it for fun because it was a passion and a hobby. Homemaking was. I had a you know a different professional career as well, and then um, we made homes together and we renovated and fixed them up and and we always had gardens um and in in the course of doing all of these homes um i was often asked you know well what's your style and you know how would you characterize the kind of look and feel that you have to the work and i really had always had a really difficult time of pinpointing that because you know sometimes i'm traditional and sometimes i'm more eclectic and sometimes i like it minimal and so it's this mishmash of things and then when i sat down and i really tried to analyze and i went back over the things 
there were four themes that emerged um, from all the work that I've done in gardens and in homes. And it became clear to me that it was much more, not a style, but a philosophy and an approach. And um, there are four of them. And these became the four um, pillars or the four ethos that we uh, wrapped the book around. And um, they're interconnected, but they're also each individual. Um, so Homes Have Souls is all about um, respecting our homes and allowing our homes to speak to us and taking our cues and our style um, from the home as well and respecting that and the people who have stood in that home before. Um, Mother Nature is the original stylist is all about our connection to nature and um, looking for na to nature for inspiration, um, you know, whether it be, you know, a walk in a park or, you know, the pebbles on the beach or the colors of a dove's wing. I mean, there's so much inspiration and uh, beautiful rhythm that you see in nature, uh, like she's just got it figured out. But plus there's also that connection that we all have to wanting to be in nature and making that connection between our houses and our gardens to um, see the two as symbiotic. And, you know, I always say, uh, every house we've had has had a garden and every garden we've had has had a house. The two go together and are important. Um, in, in Cynthia, our can we um, just pause for a minute here. One thing that I love about the book sure. and is each of your homes have had a different personality. And it's like you're saying here is that you can add all of the different elements, but the feel for each of the homes is so different. Can you talk about some of your homes and the difference? Like one was in Toronto in your in an urban setting and one was um, in the farm. So talk about that a little bit and how each of these played a yeah, role. Yeah, so the different homes um, reflect a journey, right? And a different life phase. And I'm sure, you know, many of us have experienced that, whether, you know, you may not be changing homes as often as, as we did along the way, but you're changing different things in your life. And for us, um, our homes reflected the phase of the life that we were in. Um, so at one point we were going to start a flower farm and we had a, a country property with 90 acres and a farmhouse on it. And that um, was an amazing dream. Um, and, but then we found another one. And then we uh, uh, found this beautiful heritage property in a small town outside of Toronto. And Graham and I, my husband um, and I had always wanted to have a, true heritage project to work on. So that fulfilled that part for us and that dream for us. And um, now we're back in the city because I think what we found is that this is our home base. This is where our kids have gone to school. This is where our family is. And it has become um, in, really important for us to be here. So, you know, you can look at all the different places that you're at, as long as you're with, you know, the people you love, um, it doesn't really matter where you live. And uh, I think that's what we've learned. And that you can have, a, you know, our, our, the last home that we had was a 5,000 square foot heritage Georgian style, huge, humongous house. And we adored it. And people, you know, always say to me, you know, you must be so sad to leave that house and move to, you know, we're back in the city now in this, you know, tiny row house or, or semi-detached house. Um, and no, we're not like we're happy that we had that experience. We loved the home. We loved being able to create and transform her. But now we're passing her on to somebody else. And um, as my husband always says, we take the recipe with us. So it doesn't really matter where you are. <laughs> you can I you love can, that you can, so you can, much. You can make it. You can make a beautiful place. So and I think that's what's it's important for people to, you know, understand. That's an, also part of the book is that, you know, no matter where you live. You know, whether you rent a home, whether you live in an apartment, whether you live, you know, in the suburbs or in the city, um, it's your home and it, it, you should, it should be celebrated and loved and you can make it beautiful and a reflection of who you are. And it's the people who are in there that makes it a home, right? That's so so terrific. Thank yeah. you for sharing. So let's go back to uh, the, your four pillars. If Natalia, you can pull that back up. Yeah, I mean, I think we've talked, you know, certainly about some of them. 
because uh, as I said, they're all very interconnected. But I think, you know, just um, riffing off that last point about, you know, your home should be yours and you have to be happy in it. Um, that sort of speaks to that, the pillar of the you do you. And that is all about, you know, whether you have a, whether you have a mix of high and low, trash and trash, antiques and vintage, modern, you know, whatever your style it is, whatever you love, it should be celebrated and um, that should come through in your home. It's yours and nobody has to be happy in that space except you. So, um, and that dovetails into the trendless theme, which is really about helping to empower and encourage us to listen to our own style voice. Uh, you know, we are often bombarded with trends and I love trends. I think trends are really great. They can push us to see things differently and to look at things um, in, a, in, in a new way and to experiment. So I, I'm not anti-trend, um, but I am you know, concerned that we become too um, consumed with trends and that we um, worry that you know, we're not living up to them or it becomes too much of um, a throwaway uh, culture where, you know, what was hot last year isn't hot this year. So now I have to change the color of my kitchen. So well, I think and that's also the sustainability yeah. message, which is Absolutely. really important in both Absolutely. home and garden and table settings. Yeah. So yeah. Absolutely. Talking. So these are four themes that uh, so I would say characterize my approach to everything, uh, to designing gardens, to designing homes, to design, designing tablescapes and floral arrangements. So uh, yeah. That's terrific. Well, this really goes quite nicely into what we're here to talk about today, which is tablescaping, table settings. And one of the things that I think is so important when we have people over and we're starting to think about that special evening together is setting an intention. So can you talk about how you approach an evening event and then um, how you think about what you want people to take away once they leave and the experience that they're having. Absolutely. I think it's very much like designing um, a home or a garden. The first place that I always start is how, how do I want to feel there? What do I, what is, what is the experience? What, what is it that um, I want myself, my family, my friends to, to take away? So I think it's all about setting a mood and expectations. Uh, you know, when we're talking about alfresco dining and, and creating a tablescape, I mean, it doesn't have to be, uh, you don't want this to become an onerous exercise. I mean, part of the fun is being impromptu and having these wonderful occasions where you can just throw things together and um, entertain because you don't want that to be uh, a burden to the real goal, which is sitting around the table talking together and sharing a meal. So, uh, but I do think that, you know, there are certainly occasions that you want to have it maybe a little bit more formal or maybe it's super casual and people are just having a buffet and, or, you know, eating potato chips out of a silver bowl. Like, I mean, there's different, there's different ways to do it. And it's all about, I think most of all, just creating a welcoming environment. And that's always where I start. That's terrific. Well, um, I really appreciate that. And Lucia mentioned in the chat, the um, book, The Art of Gathering is a great read about setting intentions for gatherings. So yes. um, I'm definitely going to go get that. Yes, that let's let's um, go to the next slide and start talking about your philosophy on tablescaping and um, some fun ideas. So excited. Absolutely. So look at this uh, beautiful setting. <laughs> So I, you know, I've got a handful of ideas for you here, and um, please keep in mind these are ideas and thought starters. And you know, I, I'm really hoping that this offers inspiration um, for you to, you know, take what you will. Um, and the first theme I would say is when you're looking at creating um, an outdoor setting to have a party, whether it be for, a, you know, a, a group of 20 or for just you and your partner or even yourself, <laughs> um, is how, but mostly when you were talking about a larger gathering, like where are you going to seat all of these people? Um, and, you know, I, I want to encourage you not to be afraid to move the furniture. Um, so for this, for this 
event here, we moved um, that table, which is uh, normally our kitchen island, uh, out the back door and put it outside. And that there's and there's another table at the back there that is um, host and holding the bar that is also no, normally sits inside as well as that antique chair but the wooden logs and um other accoutrements including the plinth that the the vase is on that's holding um the bottles th they live outside so i think that the message here is to um you know see what you've got inside don't be afraid to take it out and mix and match um, what you do have. And um, it's amazing if you, you have a bunch of things that you, you love, they'll all go together. So that's musical tables and chairs. And of course, love we put everything back inside. <laughs> I, actually, I actually got a, a, a message from somebody on Instagram because I posted this picture and she said, do you leave that beautiful table outside? And I'm like, no, 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 it comes back in. But you know, it, it, it doesn't take that much time to do and just a little bit of effort. And there you go. You've got draw magic and drama right away. I love the word magic because you can create magic in any space if you have the intention to do so, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, let's go to the next one. Next one. So a collected table is a more interesting table. So you'll see here in this image, this is really representative of that. And that is mixing and matching. Um, we've got vintage, um, vintage plates here, old tarnished silver, uh, napkins that are dishcloths, uh, lovely bud vases. It's all a bit of an eclectic mishmash of things that have come together to make this table look so pretty. And it didn't really take a lot of work. If these are things that I've, ha I've had around the house, things that I've been collecting, um, you know, become a treasure hunter, look for things that you love, whether that be vintage china or bud vases or crystal tumble tumblers. Um, it all comes together beautifully in an outdoor setting like this. And, um, you know, you shouldn't leave the good stuff till, you know, the good, the good times. I mean, the good times are now, right? So, right. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I mean, how many people leave their china, you know, either in right. a china cabinet or in my case, in a box somewhere and don't use it. That was my mom's, which, you know, this is just gives the opportunity to, first of all, use some beautiful heirloom pieces from our families, as well as going out on that treasure hunt, as you imagined. And what I love about this photo um, so much, Cynthia, is you said about using dish, these are dish towels here, but doesn't it look just beautiful? You know, it's, I was telling Cynthia that I went and bought some dish towels that I love the other day, and I didn't think about using them as um, napkins, but I think I'm going to, because I love that combination <laughs> so much. Um, yeah, the other, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, oh, the other thing I liked about that as well is the use of color with the vases and how you interspersed, you know, the kind of the teal color that's in the um, plates with a darker color um, with the vases that you were using. So it's just right. Beautiful. Well, so let me just give you a couple tips on that. So, so you'll see that we had vintage china, which are just again things we've collected at um, you know thrift stores and flea markets and garage sales, and you know we just like love them. They have such great character and you can just imagine all the meals that have been had on these. Um, but one trick is that if you had the smaller plates, um, you note that the smaller plates were all the same. So what that does, it creates a rhythm and a connection. So when you've got disparate plates, um, adding something that has a continuous um, look and feel to it helps, you know, create a sense of cohesion and collection. So that's one little tip that you can have. I like that tip. I hadn't yeah. thought about that. Yeah. So that brings it, that brings it all together. And similarly, as you were talking about the bud vases being um, one color um, and the, and the palette of the flowers being a very similar color and they're just simple. Those are just being these pup plot from the garden, but they had this beautiful pink hue to it, which just really popped and picked out there was a little bit of pink in the bud vases as well. So, you know, it's just all these little things that your eye will tell you if it works. And these, yes, these napkins, I buy these en masse at kitchen stores. These are, these are dish towels and um, they make 
excellent, excellent napkins. I've got stacks of them, as you can see. And, <laughs> nice big party. And, right? And then and then these um, linens, which are, this is a mishmash of all kinds of things. This is flower sack um, fabric from, you know, the fabric store, you just buy a couple of yards of it. And the frayed edges make it even, you know, look more rustic and authentic for outdoor dining easily, right? And then we've got, um, this is like a throw. You can use a throw as a tablecloth. Um, curtains are great as well. This is a, a linen curtain. Um, you can find these like at Ikea, you know, in the as is section when they've lost the pair and you can just, you can look for great fabrics, some, you know, some patterns or, you know, whatever. Shower curtains also are great hey um, who knew <laughs> yeah are great tablecloths so um you know light cotton blankets anything that you've got it's amazing how just dressing the table and adding layer upon layer of things that you already have just adds interest and adds to the collection we've got you know you can see lots of um old um silverware some of it, it, you know, has been handed down. Some of it we've picked up again at various places along our travels, but the color and the patina of them just really adds to a lovely table. So, and crystal tumblers too. That creates something that is um, instantly elevated uh, and um, creates a specialness. And again, gives texture and just to me speaks summer and eating outside. Oh, I'd like to add one of the things that um, yes. we've done is put gone to the um, like Joanne's fabrics here and gotten yes. just burlap to put over and then yes. layered yeah. over the burlap. Such a reasonable um, way to decorate a table and then also vintage cocktail glasses. You know, the cocktail culture is so hot these so days hot. that it's fun to have all these different um, styles of yeah. um, cocktail glasses. Absolutely. Yeah. And the mishmash of them just adds again texture and interest and um, I'll, when we talk about the bar I'll give you some other ideas on that but uh, yeah. So okay let's go to the next slide. Natalia. I think we've covered yeah I think we've covered off the next one which is about um, let's see yeah unexpected linens we've talked about that and you can see just how that beautiful flower sack cloth um, in the light there is catching the light and it's just creates a little bit of lightness onto the dark table. So it's just about a bit of tension and a bit of um, uh, uh, yin and yang in, in terms of uh, a very hefty monastery table with you know a raw piece of fabric. I just love that. I love the look. It's beautiful. Okay, let's go to the next one. I'm going to the next one. So flowers, always. <laughs> of course. So you know, as soon as you put flowers on the table, um, it's instantly elevated and says celebration out. You know, I think we should always have flowers around, um, but for some people, you know, they 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 don't have them as often, um, and it's it, it's almost like an instant cue that this is um, this is celebratory. So putting some flowers out, as we talked about already, about the bud phases, um, is really um, a simple way to instantly elevate your table, um, snaking it down the middle of the of the table there at different heights um, adds a lot of interest, visual interest. And I'm not sure if you can see in the picture, some of the uh, bud vases are vintage, but there are a few modern looking ones there as well. So, but the thing that ties them together is the, the color palette. And um, bud vases right now are really, um, hot and popular and bug vase arrangements. Um, so I'll share a little bit of that with you in a second. If you want to put me on the bigger screen so you can see, I will show a few other, another, a few other little tricks for simple arrangements for um, your table. So here's, here's um, a marigold that literally was plucked from a bigger, you know, pot in the garden. <laughs> uh, you put it in a little pot and put some moss around it. You can put that down your table as well. So and, cute. And they, it smells just divine. Uh, another thing, you know, many of us have herbs lying around um, in our pots as well. Just snipping the, those uh, and putting them in a cute little galvanized container. A few of these down the middle of your table is also real. I mean, this took like 
30 seconds to make. It's, um, I've got some uh, lemon thyme in here, some mint, some rosemary, some citronella, and it smells wonderful. Oh, so something like that is also really- That's so lovely. lovely. And yeah. such a reasonable um, tablescape idea. Absolutely. And you know, you could have pots, you could have your geranium, smaller ones. You know, if you wanted to, you could clip some of these geranium flowers off and put them in varying heights of, of uh, bug vases as well. Whatever you have, it doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to go to the flower store to do it. You just kind of improvise. And I think sometimes that's the most fun when you don't have a lot of time to think about it and you just kind of go out there and say, what speaks to me? And what is it that I can make something with? Um, so, I'll give you another, a couple of, two, two more ideas. One is, there's a picture, I think, on the, one of the next slides, if you want to put that up, Natalia, of um, a way to create a very easy... Uh, oh, natural, that is so natural. beautiful. So this is super, super easy. So if you go around um, to the in your garden, and you clip little bits of things that you may have. This is a really great way to use some of the little tiny things that you have or things that are almost spent. Um, and you can cut them really tiny. Um, and now you can go to the bigger screen so you can see what I'm doing here. It's almost the same principles that you would use if you were making a corsage or a boutonniere. Um, you get some fabric tape, um, some, some floral tape, which you can, you don't have to go to a floral store. Usually you can get them at the dollar right. store. Um, and you just, if you can see here, you mm -hmm. take a little cozy together, you wrap it. And really these are just bits of leaves and um, ivy and few little tiny floral details that I had in, in, from the garden and that I plucked this morning. And you wrap it around Pretty and you take a um, shower curtain ring. This is an uh, oval one, but you can use a round one, any other kind of shape. And you just put it on top and you wrap it around. And you could use rib, you know, after you put it on, if you want to be fancy, you can put ribbon on it too. And you just do that. You can see you just wrap, 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 and affix it to that. I won't go all the way and make it totally secure. And then I have to say that it makes me want to have a dinner party tonight. Right? And then all you do is you take one of your dishcloth napkins, you pop it in and look at that. There you go. Absolutely you're fabulous. You're all set. So that's like, how long did that take? That didn't take long at all. Right. And it's not, that is just I, did fabulous. Really quick. I did this really quickly, but you get the, you know, you get the idea. Yeah. But you know, it just, it shows, that's just stunning. And what an elegant dinner party that would be to have so people come and it's like, wow. It's, and, and I think that that makes people feel so special to have that beautiful little um, vignette of flowers that, that was chosen just for them. I mean, I went out to the garden just as we were talking and look at these beautiful little flowers that I got today. And, you know, that would make such a beautiful little table setting for tonight with my um, wa wash paws here. <laughs> or, um, I love it. I love it. That's it. Yeah. So, okay. And then just some things with some bud vases here. So you can see um, a couple of vintage ones. This one's more of an artisanal um, handmade ceramic, but there's a a complimentary palette going on here with the soft greens and the creams and like you I just went you know went to the garden and picked out a few things this morning and you know you can really create a simple display that you can put down the middle of your table so simple with you know a few things in your bud vases and pick a palette that you think you know will work and that's all you have to do, right? It's like so pretty. The vases are super pretty. Wow. Yes. Anyhow, you get the idea. Obviously. It's so pretty. I mean, you have a little a still be there in the cosmos. That's right. and yeah. Just a nice combination of, yes. you know, really a color palette. Yes. So that's and that's the thing. The color ties it all together. The the um, the vintage vessels tie it together and connect it. And um yeah, so you can, they don't all have to be the same. It's gonna work here. It's just but you, maybe this would go here. Anyhow, you just fool around and see. And you can imagine this down the center of a table 
and um, else? Margaret, I just wanted to uh, share that Margaret in the chat said fabulous, and it is oh, it's just yeah. beautiful. Simple, really simple. Like everybody can do this. Pick a palette, pick, take some sprigs from the garden, and you know, unify it, mm -hmm. and then it makes me want to go. Um, vintage collecting of <laughs> later today <laughs> and go find some magic it's just um where do you keep everything i noticed one of the images in your book and maybe i can find it is you have collections in book shelves which i thought was such a lovely idea like you had vases and let me see if i can find it while you're doing that um but i just loved how you set things up like here's one this wasn't the exact photo that I wanted to show, but look at how she uses the um, bookshelves for collections and a nice way to keep, you know, beautiful things that you'll, you'll use again and again. Um, but anyway, I think it's so yeah, fun. We to, have, um, to answer your question, we have a, a garden shed at the back of our yard, which we've transformed, we've painted it and cleaned it out and you know, most garden sheds hold, you know, lawnmowers and tools and things, but it holds all my, all of my vessels. So we've got a couple of large shelves, um, just Ikea shelves that we painted white and we have a display of all of my, uh, Can you see that? Is that yeah, the that's one the you're one. talking about? <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. love this. Yeah. Natalia, could you yeah. um, pin yeah. this just so that we can um, see that real quick? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, it's pinned. It's been oh oh it is okay yeah. so anyway yeah. I just wanted to share yeah, that because yeah. I just thank love you that. yeah so, it's fun I mean you know you don't need to have clearly as big of a collection as that to create interest but a few things you know even if you had um, you know clear glasses or your crystal vase your crystal glasses that you have or just any kind of barware you know it's just trying something different and playing around with the f flowers and you can you can make it look lovely. <laughs> lovely. Okay, let's go to your next one. Next slide. Next one, I think, is about the bar, I believe. Oh, no, actually, we're still on flowers. Okay, so yes. So the next <laughs> one, the next slide, I want to show you this. Okay, this is, this is El Fresco, um, like elevated, elevated. Elevated. It's so beautiful. <laughs> so, Don't you? I, I want to go sit in that right? flower garden together. So I wanted to share this because this, when we talked about magic, this truly was a, a magical experience um, that I was fortunate enough to participate in. There was um, a dinner in a dahlia field, and it was to celebrate local producers of, of, of flowers as well as um, um, growers of, of, of food and agriculture. So um, there was this wonderful event, kind of like a field to fork event in this in this outdoor setting um, just at dusk and it was beautiful. So if you go to the next slide, um, I'll just show you some of the inspiration that came from that dinner. You know, you don't always have to have it that elevated, but there are things everywhere I go, I'm looking for ideas and I take things from from that experience. And from this one, I thought it was really sweet what they did um, with the dahlias hanging down. They created a little bit of an arbor that ho um, that went down the middle of the table. You see those wooden slats. Um, you now you may not want to be that ambitious, but I thought what was really sweet was you know taking the glass jars that they had um, just affixed with some wire and a few pretty blooms in them. And they hung that. So you could hang that from a tree. You could hang that from a branch somewhere in your yard. Um, I love that. Uh, if you or if you had a patio, um, mm -hmm. a patio umbrella, you could hang it from the from the, the the infrastructure there. So you know, just there's 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 elevated and there's elevated. This was like a, a really wonderful event. But you know, uh, the principles um, obviously you can apply anywhere, and you can see that they've got. Cynthia, what is what is that? Is it a small vase or is it a a vial? What is it's that? It's like a jar. It's like a jar, like a small you know pickle jar or you okay. know something like that. They had different okay. sizes. They obviously weren't all. They weren't large, large ones. They were the smaller size ones. But yeah, that that's what they were. Just jars that you could repurpose. Um, and it was good because it's got the the lip, you know, where you put the tap, the the, the screw top on, which had prevented the um, the wire from moving. 
Oh, okay. right. So it, yeah, so it was perfect. I'm, I'm helping a friend with her wedding um, in a couple, <laughs> well, next month. So you're giving me all sorts of fun. There you ideas. go. There are some ideas for you. Yes. Okay. That's let's go to the... share that because that was, that was a really beautiful. It's, it's fabulous. And I'm yeah. so glad you did that. So <laughs> unique. I've never <laughs> seen that before and so perfect for um, uh, Dahlia Farm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. And go? feel free to put. Um, any questions you have in the chat and we'll get to those in a few minutes. So keep it low. Oh, keep it low. Okay. So, um, I love tall tapered candles. Um, but you know, it becomes a bit risky when you're, uh, dining outdoors with the wind and people bumping into things. So, you know, that's one of the other tips is just, you know, using little, these are just glass glasses, um, with, um, like votives with tea lights in them that work really well. Um, you can get fancier ones, of course, but these are just, I think we got yogurt or something in these and we had six of them. So they made perfect uh, containers for that. And you also saw in that picture, the flowers were also low. So one of the things that you want to keep in mind is that um, you want to encourage conversation. So your flowers should be low enough for people to converse over and, um, so that's and the edge. other thing I really like about this image is your various use of the um, white glass for the alliums, the purple yeah. alliums there. It's just so beautiful, the contrast with the white and the purple. And look at all the various sizes that you have that you've yeah. used here. Yeah. So again, it's it's um, the, the composition is what is the floral arrangement, right? So in of themselves, each one of them would be beautiful, but as a collection, I think it's it's much more impressive. And it's a very simple thing to do that, you know, when we talked about intention for your evening and what you want people to, you know, you want them to feel, if you want them to feel wonder and magic or feel um, special or that something wonderful is happening, or, you know, maybe you're just, you know, serving um, McDonald's and Costco sandwiches, and which there's nothing <laughs> wrong with that, right? But if you put, they put it on a table like this, um, instantly it's elevated and you feel um, that a lot of thought and preparation went into this when necessarily it did. You know, and Cynthia, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? So this is the ta same table setting that you had with the other cute flowers, like that Correct. was more of a pink tone. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so she used the same table setting, but with just different flowers and different um, vases right. to hold those flowers. So how this just shows how much you can do with the same um, plates, but yeah. changing out the flowers just gives it an entirely different feel. Absolutely. I would say this is much more elegant and um, dramatic, whereas the other ones with the disparate, you know, bug vases and the simple peonies in them was just more playful and light. Um, yeah, and you can totally set the mood with the flowers and the arrangements. And um, yeah, it's just like a dance. This is like a dance. <laughs> dance yes, table. it is a dance. <laughs> yeah. And, it was so and I just think that they look like fireworks too. <laughs> they do, so they do. Yeah. And one of the things about alliums is, you know, they're so tall. Um, oftentimes people are afraid to, you know, cut them down. But in these types of vessels, um, obviously you needed to because they would have fallen over, but um, it just creates, it creates a big mound. <laughs> so don't be afraid to cut your flowers. It makes them really easy to arrange with. That's terrific. Yeah. Um, okay, so you were just highlighted in the New York Times. So exciting, congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, this table, this tablescape was there. <laughs> yeah, that that's just so great for um, anyone to be um, in the New York Times. But I'm just so excited well, thanks, for you. Thank you and your team. <laughs> well, thank you. I wasn't I wasn't asking for that, but thank you. I know, but that was... <laughs> <laughs> My other hat is I do own a PR firm. So, um, but let's talk about some other ideas that you offered in the New York Times article. Let's go to the next slide. Sure. One, I, I think there, you know. Um, two things we haven't oh. talked about yet is um, uh, anticipation, right? And getting things ready in advance. And with a little bit of, of, of forethought, um, you can you can get away with a lot of stuff that you're not prepared for. So one of the things is readying the bar. So one of the first things I love to do for LFS, 
you know, for eating outdoors is to find a spot where you're going to set up your libations and uh, make sure that that's ready um, to go before your guests arrive. Similarly, the table, always want to make sure that the table is set so that, you know, if you're doing last minute, you know, things with your salad or your barbecue or whatever, and you can't really um, uh, attend to your guests full time, it makes them feel welcome and it creates um, a moment for them to uh, gather around. So, um, the bar, as you can see there, you can use anything to chill your wine or, or beverages in. This is a, an urn, um, a garden urn that's filled with ice and makes a great vessel. And again, it's very kind of on theme with al fresco and easygoing, carefree, um, entertaining. Um, you know, the, the bar is set up with some barware, and that's another thing. You don't need to have stems along the line of keeping it low, you know, things fall over and it's much easier to take um, just regular tumblers and put them, you know, on a stone bench or like beside you or at the table without it falling over and it's just, again, plays into that easy entertaining by, uh, you know, you can serve wine in this, you can serve ice, iced coffee, you can serve obviously water um, and other kinds of soft drinks. Uh, you don't need to be fancy. So that's, and I always buy um, a set of barware with a few different sizes and it just, you know, you put them out and it all looks like it belongs together and, uh, you know, serve your guests one drink and then encourage them to help themselves. Uh, Right. And, and I have to be, ask, where did you get those pictures that are in the photo? Oh, aren't they lovely? Yes. They're lovely. <laughs> they're from they're, they're from anthropology. I thought so. Okay. Yeah. I'm order a couple. <laughs> we got, we had one. so much. Yeah, we had one and then we had to get another one because we wanted at our dining table, we wanted one at both ends because <laughs> a lot of water is drunk. So well, I think they uh, might sell a lot of those today. Yeah. <laughs> they still have them. Yeah. The other thing though, on so when you talked about the New York Times piece, it's funny. I read some of the comments from um, some people after the article was posted. And one of the things that came out was a lot of people are concerned about eating out, outdoors because of the mosquitoes or the bugs and things like that, which I, as a gardener, I don't really, you know, think about it. It's kind of like um, part of the job, right? But um, so one of the things I started thinking about that, well, how can you remedy that? And how can you, you know, work around that if some some people or some of your guests might, you know, not like bugs or be, I'm, I'm bug bait myself. As soon as the sun goes down, they're all over me. So think about changing up the time of when you have your celebration. It doesn't have to be always dinner. It could be, it could be a brunch, it could be breakfast, it could be lunch, or it could be, you know, early evening. So um, that's just one consideration because obviously the bugs tend to come out a little bit late in the evening. Um, one tip that I've heard about is that if you plant um, several um, plants of lemongrass, around yeah. your patio it will keep the mosquitoes yeah. away. Yeah, that and yeah, citronella, things like that tend to help. Um, as I said, I'm bug bait, nothing, nothing yeah, works. Me too. <laughs> but, I'm not going to use D. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. I think that's it. But the, uh, oh, uh, sorry, just one more on this is um, just keeping uh, to the bugs comments. Uh, if you can find vases that have um, lids on them, that also helps for your water or whatever beverages. So if you've got lids, that keeps the bugs away. This is a great vessel. That is actually from one of the artisans that's featured in the book. And this is a concrete base. And you put the concrete base in the fridge for a few hours um, before your, uh, your event or when you need it. And it keeps everything chilled. So you can have a big, um, you have water in here. This is water and uh, lemon and mint, but you could have white wine in here or sangria or whatever. And it's, it's also a pretty vessel. Too. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So that's by Studio 50. So that's, I love that. Okay, um, Studio 50, that was. Yeah, just yeah. yeah, they make all kinds of wonderful concrete things. <laughs> Great, let's go to the next one. So this is really the last um, theme, and it's about seeing the potential for beauty. So the setting that you saw, the, that beautiful table being um, the backdrop for that was this really um, kind of uninspiring fence <laughs> before. <laughs> So um, the picture on the left is the before, uh, where you can see just, we had taken a deck down. So there was already um, a, a built-in shelf that was really part of the old frame for the deck. So we left that there. We added another shelf above that. 
from cobbled, like we found some old hinge, um, hin not hinges, what are those things called? Um, that you put your shelf on, whatever. Yeah, I guess hinges. Um, and um, we painted everything black. And it created this beautiful dramatic backdrop for uh, what we call our flower wall. And um, kept a palette. Yeah, thank you. We kept a similar, a simple palette. So you can see this is another tip, um, especially working in a small space. You want to make a sense of uh, cohesion. So you'll see that the palette is like greens, different shades of greens and a lot of red um, that really pops out against the black wall. And, and, um, and there's just awesome. so by putting the shelves in, you can get so much depth um, yeah. and levels. Yeah. I mean, I just think that that's such an amazing use of space. Yeah. And we, you know, planted vines so that we could trail them up there. So your eyes will go up and we kept um, the vessels um, also in a similar palette. So either black or terracotta. So and again, everything is feels um like it belongs together and is in unison. It's like an ensemble. So there you go. That's just see the see the potential for what you've got. So whether you know you've got a small backyard or whether you know you have no yard at all and you're you know throwing open the windows and you know you're creating an outdoor environment inside. And put a fan on and you know have a picnic on the floor, right? So there's all different things that you can do, um, but you just need to to look. Yes, it's it's magic. I would say this is magic. <laughs> you can create magic in your small space when you have a deck or a small backyard like I do here in the city in Seattle. Um, but let's go to another slide. I think that's it. That's all my slides. Oh, good. So, well, this is the most important slide, I have to say. So where can you get this fabulous book that Cynthia wrote? Um, you can get it at Bloom, Bloom Imprint. Um, at Cynthia's website, which I encourage you to go to. And I might add local book retailers. <laughs> so support your local bookstore. Absolutely. Cynthia, I can't thank you enough. This has been such a fun hour. I want to entertain every day for the rest of my life with all of these <laughs> ideas. I think that that's a marvelous idea. I love, there's nothing better than getting a group of people around a table and you have given us so many beautiful tools in which to offer a special event and i thank you so much for that um and then somebody uh lucia uh the instagram for cynthia what is your my name, instagram? My name cynthia zamaria so cynthia z-a-m-a-r-i-a -A -A. yeah That's thank great. you <laughs> okay well, I am so inspired, like I said, and I really appreciate your time today. Everybody order her book. It's just, oh. you know, I have to say it's just beautiful. And um, the layout and the images, many of which the of the photos that you took yourself with a couple of other people, but there's just so many ideas in here for house and home. And I'm just going to leave you with this because I just think this is just a beautiful expression of color that she put in um, with the peonies and, you know, what would a pink room um, right? be like to, <laughs> to live in that? So um, I'd love to tell you about a couple of things coming up. Um, 